So the final trailer for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's DLC has been out for a bit now, and after some time to reflect I've realized, I was totally wrong. Despite not revealing any new Pokemon or Paradox forms, it seems people are more hyped than ever for the Indigo Disc, proving the old saying that less is more still rings true. So let's break down everything you might have missed in the final hidden treasure of Area Zero trailer. But beyond just the actual video, we also got news from a couple Japanese websites that got to preview the DLC and revealed new info regarding the Synchro Machine, you know, that feature that lets you take control of any of your Pokemon, and more details about how exactly we can catch the legendaries and starter Pokemon in the Terrarium. So let's begin with the key to pretty much everything in the Blueberry Academy, Barbecues, or Blueberry Quest, in case you were confused. These optional missions are assigned to students by the school, and while it's still unknown if they're randomly selected or come in a specific order, completing these quests will earn you Blueberry Points, or BP for short. And these Blueberry Points can be used throughout the academy to purchase items, add features to the league club room, or invite other trainers you know to the academy. Thanks to these screenshots from Famitsu, we can see there will be 23 trainers in total we can invite to the club room, with 8 of them being Paldeus gym leaders. But in this trailer, we see you can also invite teachers from the Naranja slash Uva Academy back in Paldea, and if we count all of them, that's 7 more characters, 2 of whom also happen to be Elite 4, so maybe the last 2 can also be invited. Plus Champion Gita, who also appears in this trailer, making for a total of 18 trainers, and leaving 5 slots open for a certain group of former delinquents I think could round out the roster. But maybe these last few slots could instead be filled out by our best friends Arvin, Penny, and Nimona, alongside Professor Jox and Clavel, or maybe it'll be some other surprise characters we'd never expect. Regardless of who actually appears though, it seems it'll cost 200 BP to invite these trainers and they'll challenge you to battle or sometimes even offer you a trade. But this isn't just any trade, as the Pokemon you receive from these special trainers will actually bear their name when you send them out to battle. Some comments on my previous video pointed out there was actually a similar feature back in HeartGold SoulSilver, where you could trade with Lieutenant Surge, Brock, and a few other characters, which I actually never knew about, so thanks for that bit of knowledge. Another feature you can unlock by donating Blueberry Points is the ability to change how you throw your Pokeball. This is another feature borrowed from a previous game, this time one I actually remember though. And speaking of Sun and Moon, during a selfie session you might have noticed this character is doing a familiar pose. No, I don't think Z-moves are coming back, but this is a nice little throwback and makes me wonder what other nostalgic poses we might be able to unlock. Going back to the Blueberry Quest, we can see a few of them here, like catching a specific Pokemon based off its silhouette will reward you with a whopping 600 Blueberry Points. And believe me, you're gonna need them, cause these points seem to be how we'll unlock starter Pokemon in the Terrarium. Here we can see the support board, which is another one of the ways you can spend your BP, and this particular NPC wants 3000 buckaroos in order to increase the number of Pokemon that can be found in certain biomes. At the bottom it clarifies that means new Pokemon will appear in that area, so this is most likely how we'll unlock the starters, since we know from other people that previewed the DLC that starters won't show up in the wild when you first start playing. There's even this really cute screenshot of a group of Oshawa just chilling in the snow, and the fact there's that many of them makes me very hopeful that starters won't be too hard to shiny hunt. Now beyond the quests we see here, there are also group quests you can take on with friends online, with perhaps the most curious one revealed involving… Ditto. Apparently these are actual Ditto that have transformed into blocks, which is something we've seen in the anime before, but at least in the games I think this is the first time we've seen Ditto turn into an object. Obviously you won't be able to catch this form of Ditto, but it's hilarious and I wonder if they'll transform into any other things during the DLC. <laughs> Remember that strange bit where the main character focuses really hard and suddenly takes control of Pikachu in this Poke Park esque race? Turns out this weird little minigame might just be the most interesting new feature revealed. Even though the trailer itself doesn't tell us much, thanks to these previews from a couple Japanese news sites, we learned that this feature isn't just for Pikachu, but in fact every single Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet can apparently be synced with and controlled. You can walk around as your Pokemon and even battle wild ones, similar to the way you do in auto battles. So pretty much you push one button and that'll one shot kill anything weaker than you. 
will receive this synchro machine from a scientist named Sinclair and can use it anywhere in the terrarium. Though the websites don't tell us exactly how far the range extends, they do mention when you sync with flying Pokemon, you can actually move through the air with them. But as far as I saw, there's no jump button. So the only way you can actually get up high into the air is by synchronizing with your Pokemon from high up in the first place, like on top of a mountain or something. This whole mechanic reminds me of a fan game I played a really, really long time ago called Pokemon Generations, which had dynamic real-time battles where you control the Pokemon themselves, except this official version seems a lot more dumbed down, like you only get one attack. So I'm curious to see if Game Freak might look to expand this mechanic in future games. Oh, and I forgot to mention, but you can also use the Synchro Machine while playing online. So I'm excited to see what creative ways people come up with to troll each other by pretending to be certain Pokemon. I'm sure some people are going to go wild using this feature to roleplay too. While we may not be able to freely fly with our mind control Pokemon, it has finally been confirmed that we can unlock the ability to fly anywhere we want with our sandwich loving lizards, Goraidon and Miraidon. Previous trailers hinted at it, but now the website straight up says once you've made it far enough in the adventure, this power will be fully unlocked to use at any time. The screenshots only show us flying around Paldea though, so I wonder if we'll be able to fly around Kitakami or the terrarium as well. Either way, this sounds epic and I'm sure will come in quite handy as we search for the returning legendary Pokemon. But before we get to that, there's a few curious characters I spotted in the trailer that I want to talk about first. Like this red haired girl, who I did not recognize at all my first time watching, but many people pointed out is most likely Team Star's ex fire boss, Mela. What have they done to her? We also saw Giacomo wearing the school uniform in one of the previous trailers and I can't help but want to shed a tear for Team Star. You guys know how much I hate the school uniforms in these games and to see Team Star having to succumb to the rules like this, it's just tragic. I can only imagine how they'll tarnish the mighty Aerie. Another noteworthy character I spotted is Champion Gita, or should I say former champion because we totally kicked her ass twice. I'm definitely not the first person to point out how disappointing her team was. Not even like her roster was bad, it's literally just the order she sends them out in, so maybe this will be her redemption arc. Now let's finally talk about the returning legendary Pokemon and how good some of them are looking. Like damn ho -Oh, is that a new haircut? Shout out to Twitter because I probably wouldn't have noticed otherwise, but both Johto legendaries seem to be getting an upgrade and the other two Kanto starters too. Venusaur's looking particularly sharp, but I find it so funny how two generations back to back we got Charizard first while his BFFs had to wait till the DLC. Of course, there's a whole bunch more legendaries revealed in this trailer. I believe 25 of them total, including the legendary birds, legendary beasts, the swords of justice, Latios and Latias, the Hoenn trio, Alola's trio, Unova's trio, who seem to get a spotlight on their own, making a lot of people think Unova remakes, and returning from last gen generations DLC, Kubfu, Spectrier, and Glastrier. Pretty interesting that Calyrex doesn't appear with them because he's usually tied to his horses. But you might have also noticed I didn't mention Gen 4's legendaries. And that's because Palkia and Dialga are actually in special terror raids happening right now. So we can probably assume other missing legendaries like Kalos's trio might be coming in future raid events too. But as far as the ones you can actually catch in the DLC, it seems you won't be able to do so until after completing the main story, which I believe includes the return to Area Zero. Once the story's all said and done, you'll be able to meet this peculiar fella named Snacksworth. Bet you'll never guess what he sells. These must be some pretty good snacks if they attract legendary Pokemon. Like, who exactly is this guy? No offense, but he doesn't really look like the type of guy that'd be out there risking his life to encounter Rayquaza. I know I said no offense, but come on, bro. Why is he looking like Tingle? This whole thing sounds quite similar to the plates from Brilliant Diamond and Shiny Pearl, which you had to purchase in order to encounter legendaries in Ramanas Park. But instead of spending hours digging underground for those annoying to find shards, you can just buy this dude snacks with blueberry points. We don't know exactly how much they'll cost though, so it might still require a bit of grinding. 
But the thing everyone wants to know is if these legendaries will be shiny locked or not, and at least based off the past, I really don't think they will be. Meaning you should be able to shiny hunt all 25 of the ones shown in this trailer, including Kubfu and the horses, which were previously unobtainable as shinies. In the last few generations when they brought back legendaries, they've always been shiny huntable, so I can't imagine it being any different in Scarlet and Violet. And finally, thanks to the previously mentioned Japanese articles, we learned that legendaries will be encountered at level 70 and each have their respective battle themes. This is such amazing news because if you didn't know, Dynamax Adventures used the same music for every legendary and it got old real quick, so I cannot wait to hear Rayquaza's iconic theme again, even if it's reused from a previous game. Now that finally wraps up everything revealed in the trailer. There are a few other hints for the story like this mysterious glowing tree, but honestly I'd rather leave anything plot related as a surprise since the DLC is coming out in just a couple days now. And in case you didn't know, I'm going to be live streaming it from the moment it releases until I pass out from playing too long, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet to get notified when I go live. December 14th or 13th depending on where you live, and don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in Blueberry Academy.